Today, we're designing and making a Christmas-themed tea light candle box with a laser cutter. The design is inspired by the traditional American home, one with two stories, multiple windows, pitched roof, and a chimney for Santa Claus. It's the second project in my architectural candle box series that started with one inspired by traditional Japanese houses. Designing this project started with the same design file as the Japanese tea light candle box. It already has the overall measurements, slots, and tabs for the roof, walls, and floor. I started by deleting the windows from the previous project and designing the ones for this Christmas-themed tea light candle box. The idea is to design windows that resemble typical ones that you would find in a house. I also decided to design the doorway with an arched top which will be engraved onto the surface of the wood. To add detail to the door, I decided to create a series of squares that resemble a custom-built wood door. After designing these openings, I decided to shorten the candle box to fit the proportions of the house design. With the walls complete, I moved on to designing the chimney at the top of the candle box. I decided to use the same slope as the roof and used it as a reference to help design the four sides of the chimney. It will be attached to the roof using two tabs at the bottom that align with two slots in the roof panel. Now, it's time to create a 3D model to see if all the tabs and slots are actually aligned. During this process, I found that the walls weren't fitting together at the corners because one wall was actually taller than the other. After fixing the design, I placed one roof panel at the top of the house and rotated it into place. I realized that the overhang was too long and decided to cut it back so that it was a little longer than the walls. I rotated the chimney pieces into place, checked that the tabs aligned with the roof panel, and looked at the finished project. The last step was to create a layout for my laser cutter. I drew a simple rectangle as a guide, moved all the pieces onto it, arranged them, and deleted the overlapping lines. With the design complete, I gather my materials including 8th inch mahogany plywood, maxi Kier super glue, paper masking tape, trace paper, rubber hammer, metal ruler, and a utility knife. I apply the paper masking tape to both sides of the plywood to protect it from burns and scorching by the laser. I upload the design into Glowforge's online app, adjust the settings, load the plywood into my Glowforge laser cutter, Pin down the sheet to the crumb tray and start the process of laser cutting. With the updated size of the tea light candle box, the entire project fits onto one sheet of plywood. This helps save materials and time from having to place another sheet of plywood into my laser cutter and set up the file for cutting. This project took roughly 35 minutes to laser cut and engrave on my Glowforge. I decided to laser cut this project in two parts. The first was to cut each of the pieces out, which you're seeing here. Every piece is being precision cut for the design that I came up with. Once the cuts are complete, I carefully remove the paper masking tape from the walls that will be engraved. I do my best to hold the piece down, but sometimes there's one that comes off of the crumb tray. Since I pinned down the plywood to the crumb tray, I just realign it with the cutout and drop the piece back into place. If you're interested in getting a Glowforge, you can use the link in the description section of this video for up to $500 off of a Glowforge Pro. It's an ideal machine for beginners who are new to laser cutting and has amazing online communities. Once the pieces were cut and engraved, I removed them from my Glowforge, organized them on my work table, and removed the remaining paper masking. Mm -hmm. 
I started the assembly process by cutting my trace paper to fit behind each of the windows. This step is optional, but I love how the trace paper filters the light from the candle and makes the candle box glow. Once the trace paper was cut, I applied MaxiCure glue to the edges of the sheet and carefully glued it onto the back side of the walls behind the windows. The next step was applying glue to the tabs of the walls where each one will be joined. I find it easier to assemble the walls upright by aligning the tabs and slots, creating a 90 degree angle and pressing the pieces together. If you repeat this process quickly, you can assemble all the walls before the glue dries and adjust them so that they're all at a perfect 90 degree angle. Once the pieces were joined, I applied glue on the floor between the tabs. I carefully lifted the wall assembly, aligned the tabs with the slots, and pressed down to join them together. If the pieces are snug and difficult to push into place, you can also use a rubber mallet and tap at the top of each wall to join them together. That's exactly what I'm doing here. With the bottom half of the project assembled, the next step was to apply glue to all the walls of the chimney, align the tabs and slots, and join them together. I made sure I double checked the orientation of the slope bottoms and coordinated it with the roof panel that has the slots so that the chimney was constructed in the right way. When the chimney was complete, I brought over the roof panel that it would be installed on, aligned the slots of the panel with the tabs at the top of the sloping walls, and pressed it into place. I typically don't glue the roof panels on because I like having the option of removing them in the future to put bigger candles inside. I brought over the chimney assembly, applied glue to the tabs at the bottom, aligned the tabs with the slots in the roof panel, and joined them together. I brought over the last roof panel and installed it without glue. The last step was to install a candle, which you can use a battery-operated LED one or a scented one like mine and light it up to see how the Christmas-themed tea-like candle box turned out. My goal with this project was to focus on simplicity of design and construction, which shows through the minimal architectural detail in this candle box and the way that the entire project is assembled. If you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing. I'll see you again next week.